Today on Lockdown Red Wings, Dylan Larkin's return is spoiled by a slow start and continued injury woes. Your Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Lockdown Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I'm a podcast producer for the Daily J, a WWJ news radio podcast. Well, Scotty's host over at Lockdown Tigers, as well as a freelance journalist in the De- for the Detroit News. Uh, and today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. And Scotty, today was supposed to be a fun episode, bro. Do you do you have a, a dimmer light setting? It goes one dimmer and it's too dark. It's You're like, right. then, then it's just complete shadow. I know I've been messing with it too, but you look like a ghost there. It's cause I'm very pale. Well, I, I know, but we can me too, but like we can, we can <laughs> work with it a little bit. <laughs> I have, it has other light modes that it's just straight up like white light. Okay. Well, we don't need to go through all the modes. Definitely not that one. Um, I, I think that when it comes to this hockey game, um, it's funny. We were talking off air before and, and you, you had to remind me that I couldn't use the word frustrating as my word to describe this game, uh, because it was obviously very frustrating. This is a game that a lot of people were really excited for, uh, because Larkin was back and you were finally at full health for about 12 minutes and then all heck broke loose. And here we are. Yeah, I mean, that's something that we're going to have to talk about, obviously, at some point in this episode as well. We'll we'll go over who the options are for the Red Wings to have in net. Um, but regardless of all of that, you know, Larkin comes back in this game. You think it's going to be a really exciting game. You're finally back to full health outside of Perron's suspension. And you're like, okay, the boys are going to be buzzing. And it's just they, they didn't come out looking that way. And, of course, obviously, Zarnik was sent down to the minors in a corresponding move, but man, did they come out flat? And I guess, you know, when I'm thinking of, there's two words I'm thinking about when I'm thinking about my one word to describe this game and flat is one of them, but because they weren't flat the entire game, I feel like it's unfair to use that. I think I'll just go with my other one, which is inexcusable. You can't lose a game to both the sharks and the ducks, the two teams that are the cellar dwellers in the Pacific division and going to be vying for top five picks. In the draft, I, and this team I understand right now is going through another slump. They're, they're this team has two modes, Scotty. They have two modes. They're either scoring in bunches, putting up five, six a night, and just holding on for dear life to not blow those games, or they're letting other teams spot four goals and then playing really good third periods, trying to battle back. That is literally their two modes. I don't, I, I don't know what it is. They are. It is impossible for this team to have like a close. 2-1, 3-2 victory. It's either high-scoring affairs where they come out on top or they just spot the other team four goals in the first slash second period, and that's all she wrote. <laughs> yeah, man, it's a, it's actually really funny and a, you know, sad we lost kind of way. Uh, I, uh, as I talk about all the time. I have uh, quite a few friends who are Ducks fans, and uh, so this was th- this game always just like me- <laughs> means more to me than normal in general because I want to talk trash to my friends. But um, it was it was really funny. They went up two nothing, and I got a text in uh, in a group that I'm in that was like, "Oh, like you know, the Wings are gonna lose or whatever." And I was like, "Oh, buddy, like you you clearly like they might lose, but they will make it close. Like they <laughs> they're they're going to break my heart." first like they are going to <laughs> pretend as though they are going to come back and then they will still lose uh b- before that so they may lose but it's going to be a roller coaster to get there and uh obviously that that's what ended up happening it's just the the predictability of it is, is frustrating and, and it's just again we talk about it so much but the lack of just complete hockey like 60 minute hockey right like it, it's just it's constantly if it's, you know, for a while there, it was the first period was always terrible. And then the right. third was amazing. And then it flipped. And the, and the first was amazing. And they got off to really fast starts. And then the third was terrible. And they were trying to hang on for dear life. Like, they they just, for the life of a man, can't can't play 60. And it's it's frustrating. 
Well, and like I said uh, at the start, like the which period they play really well in seems to determine if they're winning hockey games or not. Because if they're having great first periods yeah. and they're scoring in bunches and they're up three nothing by the end of the first or three one, they're going to hang on for dear life and likely win that game. It's going to come down to it, but they're going to win that game. But in stretches like when they were three five and three, that that horrid three five and three stretch after their five and one start. It was a lot like what we saw tonight, spotting the other team four goals and then just battling back. They had an incredibly good third period. But what's better than having an incredibly good third period is not being down four nothing and trying to grind your way back into that game. Patrick Kane said it in the post game availability that like it's really hard to come back from deficits that large in this league. And I mean, it's no duh, right? Like it's just very difficult to do that. And you know, when when you break down the plays that led to those goals. You know, it's really nice that Kane and Debrinket both had multi-point nights. Obviously, Debrinket broke his uh, goal yeah. drought. He had yeah, two he goals. had his 400th career point, too. Uh, and 400th career point, and then Kane had two assists in this. His first multi-point night is a Detroit Red Wing. But, you know, those first two goals, somebody missed an assignment. Those first two goals, four players were down deep, and I watched both those goals on replay several times. Because for both of those defenders to be so open and have all that free ice to shoot on our goalie to shoot on the Red Wings goalie without anybody challenging them meant that somebody messed up. And through watching those replays, it's like, okay, well, it wasn't Larkin. Larkin took the high guy. Okay. Valeno's down low. Cause he, you know, he was chasing the guy on the break and who had the puck coming down the wing. He was applying pressure. So who's the third forward on this goal. This is the second goal I'm talking about. Yeah. And it was Patrick Kane, Patrick Kane, and you know you're not expecting defense out of him, but you'd expect you'd hope at least he would go to the area that he would have to cover, at least play zone coverage, so to speak. But no, he curled towards the boards, looking for a breakout pass that wasn't there because his team was scrambling and didn't have possession. Alex Debrinket did the same thing on the opposite wing on the first goal that Radko Gudis scored. And yeah, there's an argument to be made that Huso should have made that because it was a clear lane that Gudis had on Huso. Huso should have made that save with the glove. But the Brinkett also curled to the, if you're viewing the, the play left of the goalies, curled towards the boards that's left of Huso and looking for a breakout pass. And I mean, again, you you know you're not going to get defense first hockey out of Debrinkett and Kane. That's not the roles they play. But you would hope at least they would go to the area to cover and make things a little bit more difficult. Debrinkett was trying last, like just very last second to get back into position to try and get a stick on it, but he was just too late because he he curled away looking for a breakout when his team was scrambling and didn't have possession. So, again, I understand with those two players, you're not going to get defense, but those are two pretty critical errors that put the team down to nothing. And not to say, like, it's 100% Kane to Brinkett's fault that they were down to nothing. The whole team has to have a breakdown, right, for them to get into that position. And they were chasing, and they were down low, and they were scrambling. But... You know, you, it's a team game, and you got to play team hockey in the defensive zone if you don't want to spot other teams' huge, huge deficit. You know, huge leads. Yeah, well, and and that's something again that we have talked about all season, right? Like it, it's almost like broken recordy. Like we we just keep talking about how, like, yes, the goaltending could certainly be better, but like they they, they really, no matter who we put in net, is very consistently getting little to no help by the the team defense and for a team that wants its identity so badly to be low event hockey um there have sure as heck been a lot of events happening <laughs> on uh, especially in your own zone uh which is obviously never where you want to live so yeah man i uh i mean i'm sure we'll talk about the goalie situation here in a second just because that obviously took a hit again uh you know just <laughs> team can't seem to catch a break lately and yeah man i uh i mean as far as I as far as the the defensive like team effort went from the forward specifically uh, i think that that's also a conversation when you look at the lines that like just as they were right i mean there's a couple of lines you point to and you go oh that could be fun but you could also leave some plays that ended up looking like how they look so yeah, so we'll we'll take a quick break, and when we return, we will and uh, give it and take it, right? Brink it ended with two goals, so and Kane had two assists, so right. it's it's one of those things. It would have been nice if they would have at least gone and covered, but 
I digress. I've already said my piece on that. Uh, we'll when we come back, we'll continue this conversation. We got to talk about the injuries; those were huge. Red Wings can't catch a break in that regard, as well. So stay tuned to segment two of Locked On Red Wings. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's right, because as weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. That's $150 if your team wins. If you're thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and kick off the NFL season. Official FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Segment two, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. Uh, Scotty, so the first period was just overall disastrous. Um, <laughs> like, right, like Henrik, of course, after that, we've talked a lot about the 2 nothing deficit, but then, of course, it ended 3 nothing. Again, the Red Wings on the penalty kill left the high point wide open. And I think it was Cam Fowler took a, a slap shot, shot pass rather, and Henrik deflected it. It was a really nice shot pass. It was. And that, of course, made it 3 nothing for the Ducks. That was on Reimer because Philly Huso got hurt and it looked like he either pulled a groin or messed his knee up doing the splits trying to make a save. Did not look good, man. And, of course, it happens a game after you lose Alex Lyon to an upper body injury. So now two of your three goalies are gone and it sucks tenfold because both Lyon and Huso have been playing hot right now. Obviously Lyon has that one performance lately uh, before his, the injury game against the flyers where he didn't look so sharp, but outside of that game, he's been great. And Huso had been heating up. He had had two and a half games of really good hockey and with just one mistake in there. So it's just like, as critical as we were about them carrying three goalies, Scotty, that was one of those instances where you're like, okay, well, it worked out in the Red Wings' favor in some regard because it didn't work out. Two of their goalies are hurt, but it worked out in the <laughs> fact that, okay, you carried three goalies, so now you have a third goalie to go to in James Reimer. But just they, this, these, these injury woes, as soon as you get healthy, now you're hurt again. We literally played, like I said, it was like 12 minutes <laughs> of – <laughs> like injury free Red Wings roster. We we had we had a beautiful half of a period. And then it all went up in flames. Uh Wallman obviously he came back and played, so thank goodness, but he took like a 95 mile an hour slap shot off the kneecap and then you had that and then obviously Clean Costin takes a huge hit. Uh clean hit, but a huge hit in this game and uh who knows how long he's going to be out. We still haven't really gotten a legitimate update on Alex Lyon since he, I mean, they said it was, I don't I think, did they say something about dehydration? Something like I, that on the broadcast? I, I heard week to week. From yeah, I, I, right. Which like would imply that that's not it. I, I don't, I, it's wild. Uh, this, this whole, <laughs> this whole last week and a half has been an absolute whirlwind. Um, so yeah, man, I, I, I mean, as far as goalie specifically goes, uh, I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be Reimer for the foreseeable future. Obviously until we get a legitimate update on, uh, Alex Lyon, then we won't really know if they're going to make a corresponding goalie move. I would imagine if Lyon can play that they're not going to just bring up somebody from the AHL just to like be the third goalie. I would imagine they just ride with two at that point, but, um, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> Just a, a, a weird, a weird, 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 not very enjoyable night of hockey. You know, it's interesting too on the Costin hit is everyone keeps talking about how Costin got absolutely leveled. And like, yeah, it was a hard hit, but I'm pretty sure didn't Gudis. I mean, obviously Costin, again, took the brunt of it because he was the one who got hurt on the hit. But wasn't Gudis the one who ended up on his ass and Costin just went down to one knee after the awkward collision? I don't know. I'm I'm picking. I'm no, well, I'm, I don't. I mean, he was on skates. He walked. He. That's why everyone's like wondering what he said. He 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 was on one knee, but he like bent over and was clearly talking to Costin after the hit him. while while Costin was laying face first on the ice. And I, I don't. I mean, people are. You know, that's like the big question. Was he like, "Hey, are you okay?" Or was he, you know, talking game? I I have, I have no clue the answer. 
Um, but uh, but yeah, he was he he was went down to one knee and then was up on skates and was like still hanging around where Costin was. So I uh, uh, Mick Mick was pretty convinced that he was asking if he was okay, but there was some speculation on that. Yeah. So I uh, I mean I don't know. It doesn't matter. The point is, is these guys are hurt and it sucks and these keep happening. But, you know, it begs the conversation of who do the Red Wings call up because they have they have three options right now. Uh, and that is John Lutheman, uh, Michael Hutchinson and Sebastian Costa to call up to be your to be their backup. And I don't know who's going to I don't know who it's supposed to be. I don't know who, who you're going to pick because none none of those guys are really good options. Um, John Letheman has like an 860 save percentage with the Toledo walleye right now. And he is on an NHL contract with the Red Wings. It's two way. He makes like $65,000 when he's not in the NHL. Uh, but he does have a contract with the Red Wings. Sebastian Kosa obviously has a ELC that he's on, uh, three years, whatever, but, and he's got like a 905 save percentage with the Grand Rapids Griffins. So do you want to call him up? and maybe see what he's got. That'd be the fun option. Uh, But also you have Michael Hutchinson, who, you know, had at training camp, you saw a lot of, has NHL experience as well. Uh, The only problem there is he's not on an NHL contract. He's only on a contract with the Grand Rapids Griffins. It's a contract with the AHL. So you have a decision to make. Do you want to sign another guy to an NHL contract because you're at 46 of your 50 possible contracts you can have? So do you want to go up to 47 and then sign him and then call him up? I mean, those are your three options. You got Hutchinson, you got Lethamin and Kosa. None of those three really look all that good. I, I don't know, Scotty. I think, I think I'd be leaning to signing Hutchinson and just ha- having him up as your backup and then just giving Reimer all the starts until one of your goalies is healthy. But it's not looking good if either Lion or Huso are out for any long stretch of time. I'm planning on Huso being out pretty I mean, that did not look good, like at all. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm I'm not a doctor. He, they could come out tomorrow and say he's fine, and, and so be it. I'll, I'll celebrate that. But that did not look good at all uh, for for Huso. Um, did I say Lion? I meant Huso. For as far as Lion goes, uh, I mean, that's, like I said, that's the question throughout the whole thing. I don't disagree with what you just laid out, but it pretty much is single-handedly determined on, on Lion's health. Uh, if, if Lion's even remotely healthy – then they're just going to run with Reimer and Lyon. Uh, and then they're obviously not going to call up a third goalie for no reason. So um, we'll see. We'll see. Um, and, and the Lyon thing, uh, again, like I, I like the, the night of, it looked like it was uh, uh, like, I mean, and he, they're being so vague about it. And like, they talked about the, uh, you know, like maybe he just like tweaked something. It didn't look great, but like. They, they're never going to tell you. Right. They're and, and exactly. Like they're obviously not. It's just, it, it's, it's odd. I, the, the whole thing is not odd. Well, <laughs> yes, odd, but it's normal odd. This is how all teams operate in far of like, as far as injuries go. And certainly the Red Wings are very tight lipped about that kind of stuff too, usually. So we'll see, man. I, I don't know. I, I think the, the, the best plan of action is just hope and pray that Lion is even remotely healthy. <laughs> that's, yeah. that, that's probably best case scenario. I just, man, to be honest, I'm just so tired. <laughs> yeah. I this this last stretch of hockey between the injuries and the suboptimal play, in part due to the injuries, has been so exhausting. I mean, after that first period, I like I can't, couldn't because I have to come and you know recap the game with you. But they're just in one of those lulls right now, and it's unacceptable again that they lose this type of game. But I also know that they're going to bounce back and they're going to go through stretches again where they play really well, but it's just when they're playing like this, it really shakes your faith and not to sound like a bandwagon fan, but it really does shake your faith that this team could be a true playoff contender. And this is, they just have such an issue with consistency from not just game to game, week to week, minute by minute. Uh, You know, you've already covered it in the first segment, Scotty, that, you know, when they're playing hot, they'll play a really good first, maybe second period, then collapse in the third. And when they're not playing hot, they'll have a really bad first, maybe second, and then play really well in the third. And they'll win in bunches, and then they'll lose in bunches. I mean, this is, in the last seven games, they're one and six. I guess you could say I, I that's not technically true because they have the overtime loss to the Sharks. So I think they're 
one five and one or whatever it is, how many of these games they've lost in overtime, regardless, they one have one win and, and five one, losses. The game with a game against the Sharks and a game against the Ducks where you were fully healthy going into the game, both in that stretch. So it's just it gets exhausting. The 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 rubber banding between the two. It gets exhausting. And that's where I'm at right now. And that's why my energy probably seems pretty low just because the injuries and then the inconsistent play, it just gets to you after a while. And I still have faith this team's going to bounce back. And I still have faith that what we said it, at the start of the year is going to hold true, Scotty. I think by the end of the year, they're either going to sneak into a wild card spot or just barely miss. And this is what that type of team looks like. You know, a team that is going to secure a playoff spot early on is going to be far more consistent. A team that's going to sneak in is going to go through these highs and lows. And it's still a sign of progress. But at the same time, when you're going through a stretch where you have a one win in your last seven games, it's very exhausting. It's very exhausting. We got a little bit more to get to with this game. Uh, we'll get to that in segment three. We talked a lot about what Debrinka and Kane did wrong in the first period, but of course, multi-point games from both those guys will delve a little bit deeper into that as well as Jeff Petrie gets his first goal as a Red Wings. So we'll talk about that in segment three of Lockdown Red Wings. You guys tired of all the fees when you're shopping through other ticketing apps, trying to get game tickets and you think, Oh man, this ticket, $30. So cheap bang. And then they go bang right back. $60 with all those fees. It's ridiculous. It's kind of like if you're a line season ticket holder and you find out they're nearly doubling your season ticket holder, uh, cost in the upcoming season. That's what it feels like when you're using other ticketing apps, but not with game time, game time. If you, uh, is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total up front so you know what you're getting that so you know you're getting a great deal without hidden fees. Buy tickets in seconds with two taps. They're obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last minute seat deals with zone deals. You pick the section and game time picks the seats for an average of 18% in savings. And the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If your tickets, if you find tickets in the same section and row for less game time, will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time, download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Segment three, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. Uh, Scotty, yeah, we we kind of, we talked about the the lack of defensive effort from Debrinkin and Kane. And yes, again, partially expected out of those guys. They're not really known for their defensive efforts. And they, I want to say they made up for it in the offensive zone later in the game. Uh, Kane obviously had the primary assist, I believe, on Jeff Petrie's first goal in the second period, which was good for Jeff Petrie. You know, we talk a lot about, uh, we talk a lot about Petrie and Sherratt as a defensive pairing and bless you, by the way, about how I saw it. I'm always going to see it. You did a good job muting it. Oh, okay. We, All right. Good. We, we talk about both those guys and how in a lot of games they, they seem to struggle, but of late, they've kind of found a little bit of a groove. Sherratt and Petrie uh, ended up having 19, 33 and 1732. And then Petrie, of course, had his first career career goal as a Red Wing off a beautiful slap shot feed from Patrick Kane. So good for him. Then Kane, of course, with a beautiful cross zone feed to Alex to bring it on the power play to make it four to two to bring its first goal in many games and his 400th career point. So I don't know. The third period by this team was fantastic. And Patrick Kane and Alex yeah. Brinkett's performances were a big part of that. And of course, the Red Wings capitalizing on power plays finally were a big part of that. But it's really hard to get hyped up over a really good third period when you wouldn't have had to. I mean, you should always play a really good third period, but you really wouldn't have had to battle back that hard if you hadn't spotted them four goals, which is why I just find it really hard to get into that third period. Yeah. I mean, that that's been the again, that's been the story of of the years. Just a, a team of two periods. And um or two periods at a time, two periods a night, whatever you want to say. It's 
it is frustrating. It is very frustrating. Kane, I mean, the, the we talked about the defensive kind of letdown earlier, but um, that he is so good at those. Yes, just passing through like five sticks and just finding a teammate. He is. He is still unbelievable at that. Uh, it's very, very impressive. Obviously, to bring it with a couple of goals on his birthday is always nice. Um, but yeah, man, it, this is whether it's the first or the third. Like it, <laughs> it's, uh, I guess it's not all the same, but like it's, it's just as frustrating. And I don't know if it's a systemic thing. Like I don't know if it's you know they they physically can't or like they they. But you you have to find a way to be more competitive through sixty because you're gonna going to get eaten alive the last four months of this season if you just continue to do this. Well, we either get off to a hot start and then hang on for dear life, or we get up, you know, dig ourselves in a hole and try to come back every game. Well, and a big part of this game too is there's a big line blunder going on. I mean, your first line going into the game was was it Valeno, Kane, and Larkin, and your second line was. Comfer, Debrinka, and Raymond. And so, and then right away, they immediately mix it up. Yeah. So there's definitely a big element where chemistry is coming into play as well. They're trying to, they're still trying to figure out what the best matchups are. And I understand that, you know, the injuries and then the adding to the Kane element in there as well has really wrecked havoc on any chemistry that they could have had when they were hot. But they got to figure that out. They got to figure that out fast because you're playing a lot of games in a little amount of time, and yeah, you're gonna too. you're gonna find yourself <laughs> out of a playoff spot very quickly if you can't figure it out. And so, I don't think their next game is until Thursday. No, Friday. No. Let me tell, double check right now because I know they play back to back Friday, Saturday, but they think they have one more game in between there. I think they play Wednesday. <laughs> so they play four games. They play. Thursday, no Friday, no Wednesday. So I was completely wrong. They play on Wednesday against Winnipeg and Friday against Philly again. And, and Saturday. Saturday against the Devils. So they I was right. Wednesday, Wednesday Friday, Friday, Saturday. Saturday. Oof, this has been a rough segment three. This is just, again, again, just hammers home how tired I am, guys. I just, I'm so emotionally exhausted from this team's ups and downs, these, these peaks and these valleys. And the crazy thing too, right, Scotty, is we're, we're talking about how they come out flat, right? But really to put emphasis on this, like this was a close game metrically. You know, the Red Wings outshot the Ducks. Uh, the Red Wings at five on five at a 55% share of the shot attempts, a 61% a share of the shot percentage, obviously, because they outshot the Ducks. You know, Fenwick as well, they had a 53% share, 55 of the scoring chances, 53 of the high danger like the Red Wings had the edge in all the statistical categories. And that wasn't just because of a really strong third. Like even through the first 40 minutes, these teams were neck and neck, but it just goes to emphasize how bad those mistakes they made early in the game were not covering the top uh, of the offensive zone, collapsing down low, just scrambling. And it just goes back to what I was saying peaks and valleys man this team is a team of peaks and valleys well it's it's and it, to your point you know earlier when you were saying you didn't want to be too reactionary like this team it just puts you in a position where it's hard not to sometimes because i think i've done a good job of not doing that today too. they will yeah <laughs> i didn't yell i haven't met the right, man right. on I'm the just, table i'm just giving you a hard time but it's uh, it's one of those things where the like we again you talk about the peaks and valleys the the valleys are are low, dude. Yeah. Like we're we're losing to the Ducks and Sharks in a week span. Like that's a low valley. We're what one six and one, one five and one in our last. Like that's that's bad. Like this is a a very 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 low valley. But like the the peaks are, you know. One of the the higher goal scoring teams in the entire NHL, beating good teams, being in the top three in your division at one point, top four, like solidified for a long period of time. Like it's it's been a roller coaster, and the amount of injuries over the last week and a half have certainly not helped kind of navigate through the roller coaster of roller coaster of emotions that have come with the results. I also just don't quite understand like the distribution of cider and woolman 
I really don't get it. I understand they're the Red Wings' top pair. And so in a lot of instances, you're going to want them out there against the toughest matchups, which is also going to incidentally mean you're going to put them out there in a lot of defensive zone starts. But it's almost like, and I was talking to one of our listeners about this, actually, and she brought up a really good point that they're almost utilizing Wallman and Sutter like a shutdown pair. And that's yeah. not quite how you should be using them. You know, Petrie and Sherratt have, and to, to their credit, again, they have been playing a lot better lately, right? They've been serviceable second pairs, but I don't think their minutes should be rivaling Wallman and Sider on a nightly basis. And I know you got to give Sider and Wallman a, a rest. They can't play 40 minutes. But the fact that Wallman and Sider walked away from this game with less than 17 minutes of ice time each, and I know Gosta spares yeah. eight minutes of power play time, ate into a lot of their extra ice time, but... It, it's well, and Wallman, I think, may have missed a shift at least. Literally, the only defenseman that had less ice time than Wallman and Sider in this game was Justin Hole. So it's just, yeah. I know you want to put them out there in the toughest matchups, which is going to mean putting them in the defensive zone. But Wallman and Sider are so good in the offensive zone. I don't understand. Like, Sider is so such a good vision, he's such a good passer, he's so good at holding the line. Woman has such a nice shot, such a nice one timer that the fact that I don't know, the Red Wings need to get more defensive minded defensemen so that Woman and Sider can open up offensively a little bit more. And they're having, sure. they're both having nice offensive seasons. Don't get me wrong. But it's just, I almost wonder if they're being misused a little bit in their, in their deployment. Yeah. And uh, again, the like the blender's been out the last couple of weeks, I guess more so on the forward core than the blue line, but still, I mean, this has been a very fluid situation over the last you know two weeks worth of games. Um, I agree with you, and, and like we, we've I mean, we've been talking about ice time distribution since opening night, right? It started with Ghost, and, and we were talking about how Goss Despair just like wasn't getting very much ice time the first like week of the season, and then that kind of like water found its level on that. and. I I mean I agree. Like I said, I Woman took a puck off the knee. I think he missed at least one shift. So I don't know how much yeah. that has something to do with it. But like he got at the end of the day, my biggest thing, like as much as I, I love Wallman and and I love the the improvement that this blue line has seen over the last two seasons, at the end of the day, this just comes down to you have to find a way to get Moritz Sider on the ice as often as possible. Like that should be a goal relatively night in and night out. Even if you're like the, whether you are the biggest Sider fan on the planet and the biggest believer in his ceiling on the planet, or whether you, you fade him more and you're like much more of a, you know, like, um, I don't know, like have a, are much more conservative about like how, you know, the heights that he could reach or whatnot. At the end of the day, when you look at, this defensive core you look at this blue line you look at these seven names uh there's no reason that that cider should not be on the ice as much as possible yeah i don't know i'm just frustrated you know i can use that word you can't i haven't used it in a while um i just uh it's gonna be you gotta take it game by game you know it's not gonna get any easier you get the jets on wednesday and then yeah. the Flyers and the Devils on the weekend. And, you know, Flyers obviously have been very hot this season. The Devils are finally getting always cool when you have a back to back coming up and you may only have one goalie. So that'll be fun. Yeah. Oh, man. That means we might see Michael Hutchinson in one of those games. So I do genuinely think Hutchinson is going to be the guy. They're going to sign yeah, him to a contract. Again, if, if, Lyon is, uh, if Lyon is is not good to go by the weekend, then I agree with you. But it'll be Reimer, I think, the next two games. Although Sebastian Costa would be a fun call up. I'm just saying. I mean, of course it would, but I For would the be full lord if that happened. <laughs> I would be stunned. I would be too. Uh, I don't know, Scotty. I think we covered just about all our bases. Um, yeah. Team also had no puck luck. Gossip Spear had a crossbar. That's what I had written down here. One of the goals was off of Larkin's knee. Yeah, uh, yeah that was the third goal, I think. Maybe the fourth. One of those two. I think it was the fourth. I think it was second or third. Larkin. Oh yeah, it was that it was, was the second. No, yeah, you're right. It's the second one. I think it's uh the Min Minchukov. Minchukov's oh, okay. goal. I got I took my notes. Oh, Gudis was first, right? Gudas was Gudis was first. That was that just rocket. Uh Minchukov was the one that went off Larkin's Does shin. Does who pad. told you to beat glove side a lot? Yes. Are you are you joking with that question? 
Well, like semi, I, I meant more recently than like historically. I know been, that's his biggest weakness. We've been talking about it for like two years. I just feel like in the last two weeks specifically, it's been like every single goal he's given up has been glove side. Yeah, yeah, that's that's. I feel a like thing. it's been really like dramatic lately. Yeah, it's that's been a thing for a while. I thought you were messing with around with me, but yeah, yeah, that's been no. A- I mean, yeah. Again, <laughs> I know we've been talking about it for a year and a half now, but. Um, oh yeah, I had written down here a little thing. Roll reversal. Uh, the Ducks pulled the Red Wings. They put up a. They scored in bunches early held on, on. Held on, yeah. And yeah. then put, held on for dear life. Had a really bad penalty late, and then <laughs> nearly blew the lead. I thought that was kind of cute. But yeah, I mean that's all my notes on the episode, man. Frustrating, 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 frustrating. But we persevere. We ball. <laughs> He said we persevere. <laughs> That's going to be our new hashtag. <laughs> I'm going to no, change it in the not. bio right after this game. Or right after <laughs> this episode. Uh, all right. See you guys tomorrow. Same time. Same place. <laughs> it's your team. Every day. Every day.